Hi everyone, we are going to be doing a um, Hannah Carlson picture today. Um, not the whole of this page, but some of this page because I completed it in this book. Now this is Grains of Gold, which is Hannah's compilation book. And um, I was asked to show how I did this. Now, disclaimer before I start, I did it right after doing a Chris Cheng video where she used these colour combinations in a better way than I did, but it wasn't on this picture. So just to let you know, it's not my original sort of techniques, it's actually hers. But anyway, I'm going to show you how, as best as I can remember, how I did this page. So I'm just going to move this book to the side so I can see it still. And both bugs are done in a very similar way. As you can see, they're really similar. So I did the bodies the same, the wings the same, these tufty bits the same, all the heads and, and limbs the same. And it was only when it came to this bit and this bit is a little bit different, but I did gemstones with metallic round and things like that. So a lot of it was really, really similar. So I'm not going to do both, just one. I'm going to use the bottom one just because it's a bit easier for me to um, reach. I find it a bit easier. So we're going to come in closer. There we go. Now I use Prismacolor pencils. It is rare for me to use them in videos, but I will be today. And um, I haven't got my pencil sharpener in here. Whoops. Never mind. I'll do that in a minute. So I use Prismacolor. I do have a Prisma Poly conversion chart, but some of the techniques I use here will not work with a polychromos pencil. And I'll try and remember to explain that when I smush colors together can't do that with polychromos but we might be able to get a similar effect but it won't look the same okay let's get started with some of the gold i'm not going to do all of it i'm just going to show you some of it because like all of these are all the same so i'm just going to show you a bit and the body as well so i'm going to start with the um the golds as i just said so i'm going to grab the golden rod the what else do deco yellow and the oak jasmine see and i don't worry about i'm um, trying to remember all this it is the colors i use are actually in the description but also i will be telling you at each step exactly what i'm using so you don't need to worry um, I'm just selecting them, which I should have probably done before I started, but you know. Right, those are those ones. Oh, and a dark umber. That's not my one. Okay. Right. So let's get started. Now, the gold... When I was copying what Chris Cheng did, she started with goldenrod, so that's what I'm going to do. So here's my goldenrod pencil. Now, this makes a slightly orangey type gold, but that's fine. I'm going to do the body and a few other bits and pieces. So which one? We'll start with our second um, bit of the body here. Okay. And what I'm going to do is just fade it towards the middle leaving quite a gap because got a few other colours to go in there yet, like that. Okay, we're going to do that on every other stripe. We're going to have a stripey, stripey bee. I, well, I think it's a bee. I mean, it could be whatever, insect, but um, slightly imaginary bee. And we want the bee to look metallic is the idea as you saw from the original. Now this gets a bit more tricky when it gets little, just do a little bit, best you can, you know, just pop in a bit. There we go. So that's the body started. I started a bit darker down there, but anyway, I guess we can see the edge here and we can't hear. Anyway, now for the, um, whatever these are, um, yeah, I think I'm just going to do a larger one. It's a bit easier for you to see. So take a layer there and a bit from the bottom. Like that. And they'd all be the same. So if you want, you can stop now and do all of them. I'm not going to do that. And then we have the um, this bit. 
So this bit here is a gemstone, but this bit around the outside is its casing. So I'm going to put a bit of colour here, like that. And for each of these we want a little bit too, so I'm going to put a little bit here, like that. I will go around all of them, and a tiny bit on these two. Okay, so that's all of those. Um, that bit's different, that bit's different. Yes, I think that is all the gold. So obviously, not just that one, but all of these around here. Not just that one, but all of these. You might be frantically colouring now and colouring them in. I could be doing the same thing, but I'm just too busy talking. And remember these, both ends, but also these around here as well. I know they're a lot smaller, but I'll do a little one for you as well, because it's teeny weeny. Just put, look, a tiny tad, okay? Being a very precise measure, a tiny tad. Now we're going to move to a lighter colour. So we're going to move to our deco yellow. Okay. And we're going to spread our colour towards the centre a little bit more. Like that. And we're going to do that on all of them. And it's a nice, simple process. I'm doing the um, centre, all of the centre bit, but not all of the rest. It's because this bit's more fun. <laughs> It gets really small and a little bit tricky and it's quick. So here, just take it towards the middle. So I just got a message on my phone which distracted me. It's just my neighbour. I've got his parcel. I just let him know. He just told me when he'd be back. That's absolutely fine. He'd be later. So like that. So we're just expanding. And even on this little one, just pop a little bit in. Okay. Now I'm actually going to go with our lightest colour. Is this the right one? Yeah. This is an eggshell. Okay. And we just take it. Now this is our final colour. So it's going right into the sort of centre. But we want to leave a little bit of a white bit to show some shine. I didn't get that bit in the centre. This is dulling it down a little bit but I think it's okay and now I'm going to grab my sienna brown and we're going to make it a little bit darker on the edges so I haven't done the eggshell on those I'm going to just do this body bit sorry if I'm getting a bit fast and confusing I hope I'm not it's a bit here they've got a slightly more orangey tinge maybe and I guess you could start with your dark and go lighter or your light and go dark we sort of started in the middle maybe that was a bit confusing not sure a little bit on the tip there a little bit in there we haven't done our egg shot I know we can still put a bit here and here a little bit there and there and there and there we'll grab the egg shell and just do these in between the bits so here just take our colour right up, leave a little gap, like that, take this up, and this one, and even this tiddler, like that. I'm going to struggle to fit any sienna in that one. I might just do a teeny tad. Teeny tad, there we go. And then we also have a dark umber which we could use to darken, but I don't actually think it's really necessary. I quite like it like that. Although my original picture's a bit darker, so maybe if you want it darker, just put a little bit in here. Now, I think it looks a little bit messy and it needs a bit of tidying up. And I'm going to use, actually, the goldenrod to just smush it a bit. So it's gone right under the page. Okay. Now, smushing is something you cannot do with polychromos or other brands so well. Some you can, some you can't. But I'm just going to try and drag a bit of that darker colour towards the middle a bit. Like that. And we will use this smushing technique a bit more um, for the wings.
but I'm just wanting to darken up these bits a bit. I might grab my yellow again actually. Um, this one isn't too bad. Just want to darken it a bit really. Quite like those. I'm going to leave those. So I'm just going to grab the deco yellow. I just want to brighten it a little bit. It looks quite bright in the camera actually. I think I dulled it a bit too much with the eggshell. But I couldn't quite remember exactly what I'd used in the original picture. There we go. Now we're going to do the... Hmm, I'm going to bother with any brightening. We could brighten this one a little bit further in. Like that, I think. A bit more action, a bit more deco yellow. There we go. Now I'm going to do the other stripe. Then I'm going to stop the video and just finish the bits that I haven't done. Um, I'm not. The reason I'm not doing it on video is because I'm going to be talking a lot and I will run out of things to say. So I'm going to do the other stripe. We're going to start with the sepia. Okay could use the espresso dark brown something like that even the dark amber that we've already used but I just want a different color and this I think it's probably more effective to go from dark to light so that's what I'm going to do I only used a little bit on the tail because it's small we can use a bit more here it's got a bit more space to play with the idea is to try and put it a bit darker on the edge and fade it a bit as you go in I'm just gonna try and do that Now I'm going to use the um, light umber for my next stripe. Now this bit is the only bit that's going to be this colour. All the other golds are going to be that original gold that we did. Okay, just so you know. I just like to have a little bit of stripe as it's drawn with a stripe. So this is just going to be a darker stripe. Actually, I probably might want to do this with the bronze. Not the colours I've picked. Mm. It's so hard in that little bit. You just do the best you can. You know, Christmas. I haven't got a good. I haven't got a sharpener. So that's making me struggle a bit. I'm actually going to use the bronze now. I love this colour. I don't know why I like it so much. It just really does look quite metallic somehow. I guess it's a bit like the polychromos green gold in that sense. Right. Just doing the best I can again in these little teeny tiny bits. Okay, we're going to use the, the yellow ochre now. Try and leave a bit of white. And you can see that although they're both sort of yellowy, metallic y, browny colours, they look different. And that is what I was trying to get. And we're beginning because of all our layers, it's smoothing out a fair bit, I'm not seeing so much paper through. If that's something you worry about, I'm not, to be honest, I'm not that bothered. Let's try and get it into those tiny teeny tiny gaps okay so as I say I'm going to stop video now and just do the rest of the gold and then you can have a look and make sure that you're happy with how you've done it but I don't see why you wouldn't be I'm sure it's good and I'm also going to get a sharpener so hold on right I have done those now and I hope that you've been able to um do them as well um and that you've found it easy enough to make them all the same um I I'm just noticing a bit I've missed, as one does. Um, <laughs> um, I'm going to show you the chain before I forget. Um, the chain, I because it's small, 
it's a lot trickier to do than these larger areas. So all I did for my chain was I took my golden rod, oh, sorry, so here's the golden rod, and I sharpened it, I haven't, but I'm just gonna show you even though I haven't, and put a little tiny bit on each end. So a bit here and a bit here, and a bit here and a bit here. Can you see near where, near where the bits end? And then I'll sharpen it and then I'll show you. This is actually looking a really different colour to the one that I showed you, my other picture. So a little bit here and here, here and here, here and here and here and here. So like that all the way through. Yeah, I hope you can see that. So each bit and then we've got a gap. Now I then took my, I'm trying to look at what I did on my original, but I'm going to use my deco yellow which also needed a sharpen to finish it off and basically just bring those lines together and leave a tiny bit of white in the center if you can and that's the chain it's quite straightforward I'm not going to show you all of it now this bit here um here I might just show you this bit I'm just having a look at what I did Hmm. Yeah, we can do that. So again with our golden rod, marking out the darker areas. So starting with, now, why did I do those? Okay, so starting out here, I just marked out a little bit here, and then fade it a bit, and the same here, and on this one. Okay, now these little balls here, I just did a little bit of this on each side near the um thing. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what it's called. Now these three I did as gemstones like this, so we're not going to do those. Um, I'm trying to look at what I did. I think I put a bit of gold, these two is gold, and then here. So this is gold here, so a bit of golden rod here and here on each of these. Okay, so here and a bit on the end. like that all the way up this side again now this part also gold um but it needs to be a little bit sort of slightly different we're going to put some gold rod here and here to start with like that then we're going to grab our deco yellow like before and we're going to finish off some of these just with the yellow so the balls here just some yellow this one leave a bit of white in the middle and this one if you can. These little balls again you're going to struggle to see. Just stick some yellow on them. Here we can take it to the middle. Leave a, a sort of strip of white. And all the way around just the same. As I've said in a previous gold video, the one I made quite recently actually, whether I actually use polychromos, um, it's uh, leaving that little white gap gives the impression of shine. We're just going to go a little darker on that centre one. Well, and a few bits. So we've got a sienna brown. And I'm looking at where there's shadow, like here. In here I'm thinking it might be a bit darker. So I'm just going to push a bit down there. Put a little bit at the bottom. Like that. And here, where it's overlapping. Do you see? There'll be shadow in there, so it'll be a bit darker. all around really. There we are. Simple as that. Now I think we'll do our silver next. I can't remember what colours I used so I was going to be guessing. <laughs> use black. I used black for my silver which is quite unusual for me but I thought it would work and it did so I was pleased. And we want a sort of a couple of shades of cold grey or cool grey sorry is the colour in our so I'm going to use the 70% and the 30% but I'll tell you again so don't worry so we're going to start with the black and we're going to mark out all the blackness push back up so 
each of these is going to be similar to these but in silver because it's on the end I thought it would sort of look better in silver so I'm going to put a bit of black near the body here fade it and a bit of black at the tip and fade it just like that and on all of those will be the same now our um, feet or legs so we want back on the end fade it up and here Okay, and then on these, I did it slightly differently. I just put a black bit there, and then these here. Yeah, it's quite old colouring, following my own picture. These just in there, inside, but a bit on each of those arch bits. Mm. And then a bit here, and here this leg be identical so we we'll do this one because with all these fiddly details I know it's hard to always have the confidence in knowing exactly where you're putting your pencil I sort of guess and wing it a bit but I know that's um it's not easy when you're not when you're learning it's a bit there and there uh, here in these bits like that and at the bottom and then the leg like the other one so down here and up there. Then we have the face itself. Now I thought the eyes might look better if they were just black. So I'm gonna, I didn't want them mega dark. I'm just trying to leave a lighter bit in the middle. It could be a light cartoon eye. Um, then I just, yeah, dark up here where this sort of, this looks like fur, doesn't it? Yeah, just sort of fade it forwards and a bit up from there. Um, a little bit there and there. And then these similar to the legs are just dark at each end. I'm going to do that side as well. I know I haven't done all the legs, but for symmetry's sake. Okay, and what are we doing with that? Oh, that's fine. Okay, we'll do that later. Right. So now with my 70%, I just extend those black areas like we have with the um, gold. So just um, go down a bit. I'm keeping it quite light. Um, I don't want to thickly. It can be, um, I find with Christmas, it can be quite easy to thickly plaster it on. That's not the effect I want. I'm quite happy with it being a bit see-through, if that makes sense. I'm seeing a bit of paper through. I think it gives for the silver. It seems to work better. I don't know why, just something to do with the look. Just putting my tablet was going to, into sleep mode. Just putting it back. Just My son will be on his way home soon. He'll send me a little message. So I'll know when he's coming. There we go. Now, the eyelids, I'm going to do like this. So we're going to sort of shine them there. Okay, have I done both legs? Yeah. Dear me, mine's wandering all over the place. Okay, so we've got our final grey, which is our 30% um, cool grey. And we just finish it off. I'm not going to go right up to there. I'm going to just do where the the other one's fading and take it into the middle leaving a bit of white. I take this just down, I want some white on the tip of these. As I want some in the centre of there. Like that. So it just gives us a bit of a silvery look hopefully. That's what we're going for. There we go. Now with the eyes, continue with that there. Can you see what I'm doing? Yeah. I'll leave a bit there, but I want to put a little bit in here. Like that. So do you try and leave a bit of shine in there. There. 
No, it's quite daunting this page, but hopefully this will make it seem all that bit simpler. Obviously, I haven't done those two yet. Um, oh, we ignored this one, didn't we? So we need a little bit of the 70%. Um, like that and then the 30 percent there we go oh right um we've got gemstone and wings and actually the wings are quite straightforward um gemstone maybe a little harder but i think i'm okay with that i need to go and check the colors the gemstone I'm going to go away I'm going to finish the legs and these bits just a little bit just so you can see it's sort of done and then we'll work on the gemstones it's really not as tricky with it's very quick with Christmas coloring is so quick with Christmas it's so mad anyway I'll be back right I am back with my um, finished metallic part um, I did I was going to say if you would rather have your chain in silver instead of gold you could just use your um I would probably either use the black and the 70 or the 70 and the 30 depending on how dark you want it to be but just use two because there isn't space for three so you could do it in um I don't think it'd make much difference whether you did it in um in the silver or the gold really it's sort of up to you I'm just moving that because we're going to do our gemstones we need to see them all now we're going to start with the um I'm gonna start with this yeah a uh, non photo blue okay and we're gonna do oh let's, let's get started now I was sort of thinking that this one now some people like to do a gemstone so that it's dark on one side than the other but we're looking right down from above and I'm just gonna do a sort of faded layer aren't we if you look we're looking right down from above at this gemstone and um, and so I'm just thinking it's gonna be the the lightest part might be here and the darkest part around the outside that's sort of what I'm thinking so this is my sort of mid color and I'm just putting a bit down to get us sort of started really now I'm doing this as a gemstone as well okay but it'll come together now I know that gems can be a bit frightening um, as can metallics but it's just a matter of practice and yeah practice and finding a technique that works for you and a colour combination as well I'm going to go up here can you see just put, um, this particular one is the one that I've stolen off Chris Chang, but you can do whatever you want. Now she uses some violet. Okay, so we're going to go darker with our violet. So think about the eyes are going to be dark right on the edge here. This is where I think it's going to be darkest. So I'm going to add this violet over the top and just scumble it out. So just do some round and round movement outwards a bit. They get a nice colour. And do the same on them. Don't worry if you cover loads of the blue like I just did. It's not an exact science. Imagine looking into a, a, these gemstones. Would they all look identical? I don't think so. Maybe. I don't know. I'm not an expert on uh, gemstones. But I'm thinking they probably wouldn't. So it's probably they don't need to be exactly the same in my opinion. And uh, they never will be. In with colouring, you can't get it all identical, it's really hard. I mean, just do your best. Okay, so I've scumbled around a bit, and here, this one too, around here. Around the edge. And now we're going to go even darker in a few areas with our indigo, indigo blue. Okay, so we want to go right down here. On top of the black line that's there already is perhaps and down more just to get a sort of shadow in there okay like that nice and dark can get that all the way around 
Now with these think about where the shadow might be. This one's quite straightforward, would we'll just be around the edge a bit. You don't have to put too much down but here, look where there's an overlap here. Just, you know, use your common sense and your instinct. Think about where the shadows would fall and pretty much just going all around the edge. Apart from here, look, we've got this bit sticking out, so I want a shadow around there, that little triangle. I'll do something similar when we get round to the other side. Now the good thing with Prismas, and most pencil, good quality pencil, could keep layering them. So if this isn't dark enough, I'm going to go look around the edges triangle. If this isn't dark enough, you can come back and do some more. If it's too dark with Prismas, you can go over the top with a lighter colour and it'll you can change it a bit. It's not as easy to do that with all brands of pencil, but we're using Prismas so we're lucky. Right, now I have a lavender. Okay, now if you don't have the lavender, you can use your orchid. Okay, I know um, the lavenders are no longer being made. I'm just going to put a bit on like that. These are already looking quite shiny, these little ones. I'm quite happy with those. So just a little bit just inside the blue, really. Be as rough as you like got more layers to go on. Well, one actually, I think. But we can, as I say, we can always keep layering up after. So if it all goes a bit rubbish. I was doing a picture the other day, so I'm going to just scum all this over and bring it in towards the middle. Yeah. I was doing a picture the other day and it all went horribly wrong. And uh, it was far too dark. I was doing a face actually, and uh, I put a really dark mark on the face. Oh, uh, <laughs> as you do, sky blue light. And we're just going to go over everything and pull some of that colour in towards the middle using the light and sort of smush it all about. Okay, so this is what you can't do in polychrome, is you can't smush. But you can layer over. Um, yes, so I it, it did a really dark bit on the face and it looked wrong. So I did take my eraser to it and erase back some of it. But there's a limit to how much erasing you can do at stains paper and things like that. The, not the eraser, the pencil. And then I just went over the top of it with a much, much lighter colour. And over and over, a few layers and it was gone. It's like, yeah, brilliant. Happy days, as they say. Right, we didn't, we did, I'm lying. So here I'm going to start on the edge and then just pull the colour in towards the middle, scumbly scumbly, and that centre bit, it's quite light. There we go, and the same one here. And at this point you can have a look and think, hmm, do I want to add some darker colour back? Is it looking how I want it? Um, you know, what do I want to do, how am I, is it um, quite right? Now, I'm not happy with it yet, so I'm going to fiddle. This one, particularly, I'm going to get back in there with my indigo. I want a much more defined edge. Because I think then, I'm going to use my non-photo blue we can make it look a bit more three-dimensional than it is if we build up those darker layers like that. And we put, whoops, ooh, pencils going everywhere. Lavender again. There's a bit of lavender here. And now back to my sky blue light. And I'm not going to go over all of it, just the lavender, because lavender's too dark. and the centre. Oh, let me get my brush. Where are you from? Oh, there it is. Sitting right on the desk. Derp. So there's that one. And then this one, again, I want to build up a little bit more. I'm going to use my violet this time on this one. Okay, so I want to just build up a bit more colour coming from the edge. A bit too light. Be 
scared of it, it's just a pencil. There we go. And then our non-photo blue over the top. Not right to the edge, I want that nice and dark. I'll just bring that colour in a bit. It's a little bit pale. Back to our lavender. And then just back over with the blue, mainly in the middle. Ooh, it's a noisy train. Uh, <laughs> there we go. I was happy with all the edge ones. Now I want to put some white on here to make to give us a proper defined shine. Um, but I'm going to leave that for now. I'm going to do the wings first because I want some white on them as well. White pen, I mean. And I'm going to just smudge it if I don't if I don't do the wings first. My first bit for the wings is to grab my lavender. And what I'm going to do with my lavender is something very straightforward. You go all the way around the edge to start with. Now you may be thinking, her wings didn't look like this. They did. This is how I started. I'm only going to concentrate on the one wing, I think. They're about identical. Okay, and now on these lines, so either side, so I'm sort of defining the sections. This colour, I don't think I, no, I'm just, just checking what I was doing. So it's just sort of going both sides of the line, sort of over, oops, like that. Now you notice I'm ignoring the circles, we'll worry about those much later. We, it's quite fine to colour over them, don't worry about them at all. Okay, now what have I got going on? Hmm. I'm trying to work it out. I think there's a bit of non-photo blue. And I think it's just in a light layer around here. I'm not entirely sure. I think I might be wrong, but I'm just going to give it do this anyway. Now, I like my wings to look transparent sometimes. And if I was doing that with this one, what I would have to do was draw this line of this body through here, wherever it might be going, probably out here and back in. Draw, colour this bit all the way to the edge of that line, and these bits, you'd have to draw those in. And uh, yeah, then colour the colour the wing on top of that colouring, and then sort of fade it back somehow. It'd be quite hard. Um, sometimes it's easier on certain pictures than others, but this one I've decided to make the wing look like sky blue light. Um, we are looking it. It's sort of semi. Um, it's sort of um, misty, so we can't see through it. So this is going over everything. Okay. Sorry, I went all quiet then. I was just thinking about um, what, where my next colour is. I've got, I've got one. Now, if you are following along in a pencil brown which isn't very smushy, um, you might want to. Um, the next step, you need a smushy white pencil. So, I, I would recommend a Derwent Chinese white, a Prismacolor white, or a Luminance white pencil. Even the Artex white pencil is better than the Polychromos for this next step. White. Right. So we're just going over the whole thing with a really thick layer of white. We want it to look so we really can not see what's going on underneath that clearly. Can you see that? 
how it sort of looks really blurry. That's the look we're after. Now you'll find that some of the bits of pencil will come off. Can you see? That's that's what happens with Prisma. I'm going to brush that off. I'm going to do another layer. I want the sort of thick white coating over the top of what's underneath. Okay, now we get our white pen. I'm going to try and brush off all the excess pencil sharpenings, jelly roll 10. This is what makes the difference. So we're going to go all the way around the edge of the wing. So all the black lines need to be covered over to soften our wing. We don't, I'm not going to do this on any other part of the uh, page, just the wing. And the circles and the lines. So those pink bits that we've put in are going to define the sort of wing sections rather than the white, rather than the black lines that are underneath. Now cover the black lines fairly well in the white pencil as it is. But this makes a much bigger difference, I think. It's well worth the effort if you've got a white pen. And so we're just going over the top of those circles as well. Now it's just a bit different to my original, but I can't remember what I did. So I think this is a bit too dark here, these edges. Right, and when we've done the white on the wing, I'm just going to scribble because my pen I stop writing. Um, we will also do some white on the gemstones. Now, you might want to do several layers. I noticed that um, um, in this the video that I was taking the ideas from. Chris Cheng used a particular white pen which was a Uniball pen but I like my Sakura. The Uniball, I have got a Uniball pen, it's alright. Um, this is Sakura, Sakura 10. I like Posca too. Um, so most white pens are okay. Um, the Castle Arts one in their gel pen set is rubbish. I I don't know whether it was just mine that was rubbish, but it didn't work. So there is the wing. And now we need to do our white pen on our gemstones now. Uh, you can sort of just go for it, really. i sort of doing one each side of the top part. I think that's kind of working. All around and it gives it more of a life in the scent, I think. Now here, Could sort of make it up. Oops, this is going pink from my pen. Now this one's got one drawn on it, so I'm gonna use that as my guide. Like that. Mm. Can you even see that one just? Unfortunately, this is going pink. I think it's the lavender pencil that lets the... Mm, might be, I don't know. That makes it go slightly pink. 
But there we go. So there's our shine. Um, yeah, we've got a wing not done. <laughs> um, I am going to do that in a minute and then take a photo so you can see the finished bit. I'm not going to do the other bug yet because I am contemplating whether to try and do it in polychromos pencils for those of you who haven't got poly um, prismas. Hmm. You could let me know in the comments but it might be a while. Hmm. Not sure. I'll have a think but um, yeah I might just finish my chain up to there um, as well but then stop there. Yeah, I could have a go in uh, in polychromos, but um, not yet. Tomorrow we have a um, uh, we have a planner page. Now this wing looks really different to the wing I did before. The wing I did before was really really pink, it had very little blue in it. I don't know what I used. Whether I used a blush pink or deco pink or something. I think I might have used a deco pink. Hmm. Have a go. Might be a bit late because there's so much white on here. Yeah, it's not really going to take. It's a bit there. That one did. To be careful, because I'm taking some of the white pen off. I colour over the circles. That's better. I like that better. You might not notice the difference. Okay, I am going to go anyway, finish the wing, finish the chain, take a little photo for you and have a think about whether I'm going to do this in polychromos or not. Anyway, <laughs> thank you so much for watching. I um, hope you have a really super day and happy colouring. <laughs>